4, Swissborg. 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 Swissborg est sorti ce matin. They have an app where you can buy crypto. They connect to Binance, HitBTC, LMAX, and Kraken and find the best rates in the markets. What I like about Swissborg is that they have an amazing app that can directly buy cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and also cash out as well. Through Swissborg, all assets will have a fiat gateway. And here is the thing. Premium features gives you zero fee trading. That is zero fees. If you want to buy Bitcoin with fiat, I suggest you buy through Swissborg rather than Coinbase. And if you're interested in trading the likes of Ethereum or Bitcoin, use Swissborg's application. Dear crypto community and blockchain buddies across the globe, welcome back to Kryptonites, the no BS blockchain channel built with the community and for the community. And today we have the season three finale. We're so excited because we're resuming our intimate interviews, timeless interviews with amazing people. And speaking of amazing people, we have the CEO of Utrust, a good friend of mine, a really cool, cool person. Sanya Khan, a pleasure to have you, my dear. How are you doing? Oh, thank you so much for having me. Nice to be here in London, back to London. I'm so glad to have you back in London and Utrust, congratulations. One of the coolest projects of the year in 2020. Everyone's talking about you trust, so really looking forward to hearing more about that. But before we start, as you know, we clicked almost instantly when we started talking about self-help and personal development. And I know you love developing yourself, going to seminars, Tony Robbins and all these cool things. You must have so many cool stories to share with us, if you don't mind treating us with a cool story to start with. Oh yeah, you know, I love that. That's, that's really my passion. So I'm really passionate about growth and self-development since I was a kid, basically. Um, and I think, you know, the first step for me professionally was being able to work for large companies like eBay, PayPal and Vodafone, where you really develop what we call the personal development plan. Where do I want to go? What's the vision that I have for myself, my career, my company? Um, where I am now and what is the gap that I need to fill to, to go there? So that really you know, taught me to have that sort of analytical mindset towards always setting myself a goal, putting in place actions to, to reach that goal. We were talking about this before. Um, my favorite uh, coach like ever is Tony Robbins. I went to a lot of his events um, and really my main takeaway was that, you know, su success is a result of multiple things. So it's not only your ability to achieve your dreams or like hit your goals, that, that's only like a small portion, but it's, it's also about what he calls um, the art of fulfillment, which is really, I am able to find, you know, joy and happiness every day, even if, you know, I'm having a difficult time, I'm able to find joy and appreci appreciation. Life is happening for you and not to you. So you're not a victim and you can find, you know, meaning, you can find understanding in every situation, you can learn from that. Um, so yeah, I think main takeaways is really finding joy in everyday life. And then um, maybe the biggest one is show up for something bigger than yourself. So it's not, it's not only about your ego. It's about serving a bigger purpose. Because um, if you only like work for, for your ego, when you reach that objective, you're not gonna be really happy. So find something that really fulfills you and serves like a bigger, bigger purpose in life. Wow, um, so yeah. many lessons learned, so many breakthroughs. <laughs> yeah, that's in a nutshell. <laughs> that yeah. is so cool, there's so many tips there. But uh, we were talking about earlier some of the crazy stuff you've done in these seminars at Tony Robbins Seminar. You walked on fire, everyone is crying all the time. Tell us a little bit of something, what is the craziest thing that happened oh, in yeah. one of these seminars? Oh yeah, so there is an event which is called UPW. Uh, it's in London actually. So at the end of day one, you, you walk on fire. Um, and it, it's really about you know showing you how you can condition your mind to do crazy things that you know you would not do otherwise. Um, also recently we've done um, the UPW event but it was virtual so it was all um, you know from home and a colleague of mine came with me we were crying all the time for four <laughs> days because you release a lot yeah. there's a lot of emotions and all the yeah. heavy bags that we keep with us right? yeah and yeah. I think that part of like just being vulnerable um, and being able to let it go and express your emotions is really important yeah and what's really magical is you know obviously there's a law of attraction which Tony Robbins talks about visualization and seeing things and repeating it until it 
becomes the physical, you know, proof, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, I remember meeting you last year and you were visualizing and kind of setting a goal to become the CEO of Utrust. And what happens just like half a year later, you are the CEO of one of the coolest companies in crypto. And you came in really at a time that's really difficult, right? The pandemic and all these issues, it really needs strong leadership. And I'm sure you've learned many things through the corporate culture. How was that transition? All of a sudden, yeah, I'm on the podium, but uh-oh, what's going on right yeah. now, you know? Yeah, I mean, no one prepares you for that, right? So even if you read all the management books like no one prepares you to become ceo or take like a leadership position in such a difficult time in a crisis so becoming ceo or taking any leadership role is per se very challenging and usually requires you to learn new skills and have some time to to adapt um, be with the team um, and in my case, I really didn't have that time because like once I took the role a month after that um, COVID happened and I moved to Portugal to, to be with a team. And I think what really helped me, one of my mentors, um, actually, he gave me an article to read written by Ben Horowitz. It's about wartime and peacetime CEO oh, yeah. and like what is the different leadership skills that you need in a time of crisis versus normal, like regular time because no one teaches you that and he was mentioning how in a normal time like a ceo would be focusing on company expansion culture people while you know when you have a crisis it's all about survival let's look again at the strategy is this the right strategy for us moving forward to not only survive this crisis but you know thrive and grow after that COVID was actually a good time for us, if I can define it like a good time. Um, but it was a time of reflection, time of like research, speaking a lot to the market, to our customers, <clears throat> refining our offer. So we're expanding a lot into enterprise sales and B2B and cross-border payments now as well. Um, as a result of like going through COVID and um, the crisis and having the right time to, to reflect. Um, and also, yeah, it was a time of adapting, like how do we work in a remote only way? How do we communicate to the team? Um, Cause yeah, you, you over communicate rather than uh, not. So it was all about shifting everything towards async communication and having just regular catch ups with the team. Yeah. That's super cool. I'm, I'm yeah. picturing you kind of like a Winston Churchill mo a moment, you know, <laughs> where you're like giving a speech and everyone's crying and yeah, we will, <laughs> we will bear through this crisis, you know. <laughs> so. Yeah, there, there were moments <laughs> like that. Yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's I'm sure you, your leadership has been amazing because the, the company has been growing a lot. But before jumping into you trust, one more question I have for you, like because we're talking about the crisis and a lot of people are talking about how banknotes are becoming irrelevant already in the UK. Even when I go to the train station, they don't accept banknotes even at the train station. Um, but also, I remember going to China like uh, it was Shanghai. I, I think it was about five, six years ago. And when I, while I was there, like already banknotes were completely irrelevant. You know, everyone's using WeChat, Alipay, yeah. and even homeless people on the streets. Oh, like wow. they, yeah. they had a QR code because the mobile phone or the smartphone is so cheap, right? You can buy a really cheap one. So if you have just a little bit of money, you can use a phone. And people would ask for, you know, donations or they would ask for money through a QR code. Yeah. So um, I would love to hear your overall thought. Like, has this crisis accelerated payment systems? And how are you seeing this as of today? Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, I think, you know, the world was already going towards a cashless, cashless society, more in countries like Asia than, than others. Um, and definitely COVID is accelerating that trend. Um, people's perception on cash is changing. So they see it as a more dangerous tool to, to be used. And we're seeing an acceleration of um, other payment methods, online payment methods, um, even commerce is shifting towards more e-commerce um, people that never bought anything online are now buying online so definitely there is a need uh, for people to have better online payment methods also it's it's not only asia in countries like uh, northern countries norway denmark i think there is a plan to go completely cashless by 2030 
um, so in, in 10 years. Um, oh, wow. And I think in that, what we are seeing um, as you trust is also an acceleration of blockchain payments, cryptocurrency payments, not only for what we initially thought was our core market, which was uh, B2B2C, um, so retailers, marketplaces serving uh, consumers who are buyers, but also to facilitate really cross-border trade um, for B2B payments. Mm. And we're talking about you know, higher volumes, um, payments are very slow. So this is really where blockchain can, can innovate um, and bring you know, not only reduce costs, but really bring more speed, more ef efficiency in payments. So definitely we will go to, to a more online and a more uh, blockchain based payments um, society. You know, like I remember 2017 having like a crypto card was the coolest thing, right? Uh, and of course, Binance, are, they're launching their Binance card and crypto.com, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, why did you guys focus on a technology where you scan QR codes rather than focusing on a card? Do you see that as the next generation or the, the future of payments? So I have to confess when I joined this space, like when I first started to learn about blockchain and crypto, I came like a bit later than, than other people. So it was 2017. Same here. Me too. <laughs> yeah. 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 So I was very shocked because the experience was very complex. So even for someone you know, tech savvy, it's really difficult to really get into crypto, to buy crypto, to exchange, to, to pay. Um, and I remember like I was shocked that I would need to copy paste manual addresses. And like if you lose a number, then I was like, how do you do that? Um, so I was very scared. It took me some time to, to adjust. And that's why, you know, user experience, it's our main focus at Utrust. Um, so creating an experience for our customers and sellers that it's really easy to use. Um, so we are, you know, in the middle of a two-sided market and merchants on their end, they're not quite ready yet to be paid in crypto. And that's why we provide a crypto to fiat service. So even someone without, you know, any knowledge or blockchain or, or crypto can start accepting crypto as a payment method to offer that for their buyers. Um, even though during the pandemic, more and more customers are asking us to be paid in crypto. So that's something that we have in our, in our roadmap. Um, we are also wallet agnostic. So we will not lock customers to use our own wallet. We enable any wallet in the market. It's really easy. They can scan the QR code or they can manually copy paste the address as well. Um, so it's it's really simple, really user friendly. Yeah, yeah, it really is simple for me as well. I'm, I'm only using my phone these days with Apple Pay, right? I mean, I don't even use my credit card anymore. It's yeah. so convenient, right? Yeah, yeah, it's good to be in London because I was like taking the underground before and I was paying with Apple Pay. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, yes. <laughs> and that yeah. is super cool. That is super cool. And so in terms of you trust, like uh, you were talking about, you know, kind of the, the vision for now. Um, where would you like to see you trust? And I know it's a really difficult question, but where would you like to see yourselves like next year or the year after? What is kind of like the, the roadmap or things that really excite you the most about yeah. this company? Yeah, we this has been a great journey uh, and 2020 has definitely been a great year. Um, so we started like Q1 was all about scaling our solution. So when we started with our payment gateway, uh, we were really focused on partnering with large retailers, brands to build reputation in this space. Um, but Q1 this year was very much focused on expansion, scaling, and now anyone can self on board in five minutes on our platform. Very easy. Um, we developed major plugins in the market. Um, so we cover Magento, that's 12% of the whole e-commerce space. Um, WooCommerce is more than 30% of e-commerce stores. So it's really important for us to be everywhere, really enable anyone to um, use us as a payment method easily, very quickly. Um, we are more and more and more expanding into B2B as well. We're launching an invoicing solution very soon um, for anyone to be able to create an invoice in fiat and be paid in crypto. Um, and that's not only for you know small businesses and freelancers, but um, a lot of our large enterprise B2B customers are going to be using it. Um, we're focusing a lot on user experience. So it's really about um, creating a great experience for people to, to use crypto, to safely store cryptocurrencies. 
So I think for us, yeah, in the next years, it's going to be about strengthening the, the, the ecosystem um, and really for anyone to be able to use it, whether, you know, a merchant or, or a customer um, and really enable that, that global trade to be, to be easy and efficient as, as it should be. That's so cool. And you guys have great validation when it comes to UTK. You know, a lot of the influencers, Ivan on Tech, The Moon, and a lot of people are, that martini guy, are all talking about how the UTK coin is, is a really, has a coin with real value and future utilities. In terms of the coin, can you tell us a little bit more about UTK and, and what are the future utilities? How do you see it evolving from here? Yeah, uh, yeah, you, you said it correctly. Like for us, it's all about the utility. Uh, so there's no speculation. We don't talk a lot uh, about ourselves. It's only about, you know, delivery. Um, and that's why I don't even take a lot of interviews. <laughs> so I'm really happy to be here talking to, to you because um, we don't like to, to speculate, announce. It's yeah. really about what we really do in the market. So, um, so yeah, our token is a utility token deeply integrated in the whole ecosystem. There are also some new utilities, really cool. Um, we already pre-announced some of them, so I can briefly touch base and then you will see it as well in a few weeks. Um, so one is a very cool um, staking mechanism. We spent a lot of time um, thinking about the strategy to implement something unique um, and it's called reverse staking. So actually, um, it's a deflationary model. So the more you use the ecosystem, the less uh, circulating supply there is of the token, creating scarcity. Um, so that's that's going to be great. Um, stay like tuned. It. Yeah, you will I see like it in it. a few weeks. Um, and then an affiliate program as well, where we will allow our major token holders to basically earn tokens um, and rewarding them for uh, expanding our merchant network in a way where we don't need to disclose our merchant TPV, our total, total payment volume, which is great as well. Um, by the end of the year, beginning of Q1 next year, we'll implement a burn mechanism of the token, uh, which is going to create more scarcity as well. And of course, when we are crypto agnostic, right? So you can um, pay with any crypto, but if you pay with UTK, you don't, uh, you will not pay um, the network fees uh, uh. of the blockchain. So, so yeah, it's deeply integrated in the whole ecosystem. Cool. So it becomes a default choice, you know, yes. for, wow, yes. this is super exciting. <laughs> I can't wait for the weeks to come. <laughs> <laughs> but but Sonia, you know, I know you've you are super busy and I thank you so much for coming today. You've told us some such cool things as a leader, CEO, you know, being thank inspired, you. personal development, self-help, corporate culture, the the crisis, how you've pivoted to reach that crisis, you trust the future of payment solutions, UTK, so many cool things. If we want to find out more about you trust, obviously there's a website, utrust.com. Where are you active? Where should we go to to hear more about you and the company? Yeah, obviously tell Instagram, uh, LinkedIn, Twitter. Um, I'm very, uh, very present on, on those social media. You can follow us on our main website as well. I'm so looking forward to it, Sanya. And definitely when you come back to London, we need to do it again. Yes. Uh, thank you so much for having me. This was super fun. There you go, guys. Another timeless interview. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment and blast that bell notification. Join us every Wednesday, 8 o'clock UK time, premiering at a PC near you. Thank you so much for watching and see you next week, guys.